And we're back with way number two of the 48 ways to maximizing pleasure in life. So way number one we discussed was study, constant learning. What's way number two? Way number two is listening. Listening of the ear. We need to hear the message. You know, one of the biggest challenges people have is that they're constantly busy talking and they're not listening. People need to listen. Listen to the messages. There are being messages uh, uh, transmitted to us by the Almighty every single day, every single minute. And if we just open up our ears, we will listen. So th the second one is Bishmiyat Ozen, the listening of the ear. A person must always be listening. Get the messages. There are constantly messages being, being uh, distributed. Uh, part of being a listener also means learning to accept. You know, sometimes someone can criticize us. It could be the person in the car next to us. It could be the person in our, ho in our home, a sibling. It could be our rival in business. It could be anyone around us, someone sitting next to you at a torch class. It can criticize the way you're knocking on the table or you're kicking the, kicking the desk or, you know, or, you know anything. The word, they don't like the way you make your coffee. I don't know. Everyone has something, something that. One second, this. We're on live. <laughs> Thank you. So we have all of these opportunities to learn from criticism. The real, real um, gift is if one learns how to listen. And you know what? If someone, if you can please pass the spoons and pass that down. Spoon. 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 There we go. So, if a person really wants to learn, they have to learn how to accept criticism as well. And accepting criticism is one of the greatest gifts you can ever, ever acquire, and that is because you will only become a better person from it. We know that the, the, the Talmud uh, teaches us about the verse in the Torah that tells us, You shall criticize your fellow man. <clears throat> So the Torah tells us, you should criticize your fellow man. Meaning, not criticize them, knock them down. But yeah. constructive yeah. criticism. Right. Yeah. Help them grow. Yeah. Right? Help them see their blind spots. Everyone has a blind spot. You can see behind me. I can't see behind me. So if there's something coming to hit me, like anger, <laughs> or something, a bad trait, you can bring it to my attention. I may not see it, but you see it. So that's why we need, and that's what the Torah requires us to teach our fellow man, to help them navigate when they don't see, when they have those blind spots. But the Talmud says, just like there's a mitzvah to criticize one who you know will accept, is a mitzvah not to criticize someone who you know will not accept. Right? Because there are people who are, they're, they're not in tune or they don't, they don't want to hear, they don't want to listen. Right? There are people who only want to project, they don't want to accept. Right. We need, in order to maximize pleasure in life, and anyone who's, uh, who wants to be happy in their, in their life really needs to, to pay attention and needs to listen to those messages. Rabbi Yeruchim Levavitz, Rabbi, the great Rabbi Yeruchim uh, uh, of the Mir Yeshiva, is, we used to talk about current events going around, uh, on around the world. He would talk about different parades that were going on in the world, in different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And he would talk about it with his students in the great Mir Yeshiva in Poland. Why? Because those things don't just happen. They happen for us to hear, to get a message, to understand something, to learn from it. There's something we can learn from everything that goes on around us. And we have to, be, we have to learn to be listeners. Um, we also need to know and again, this is a very, very, very abbreviated uh, teaching of this second way. But we have to know that someone who's shy will never learn. Right? You listen. Get those messages. But if you're going to be shy, you're not going to ask questions. You're not going to investigate. You're not going to really open yourself up. You're never going to learn. Uh, the Mishnah tells us um, that there are six... 100,000 different faces of the Torah. There are different perspectives. Everyone sees something differently. Everyone sees something in a different way. All right? So, with that, I just want to leave off with one quick, a short note that someone once told me. 
He said, men are in one ear, out the other. <laughs> Women are in two ears, out one mouth. Right? So, but either way, so to get a clear picture of wisdom, we have to define and understand all that we hear. Effective listening is the key. Yeah. One other thing here, just as a summary, listen and hear the messages. God sends us messages. If we listen, we'll hear it. Now, to the question that's being asked here online, how do we hear the message without the negative stuff getting in the way? So it's a great question, Ravanda. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and the answer is like this. We have to take, you know, it's like you have to think of it as a sifter, right? You have flour. You want to sift flour, right? You have to sift through and get what you want to get and what you need to get. And we as human beings... Just because someone is angry and says it in a nasty way doesn't mean we have to get offended by it. But there may be some truth to it. So let's take the truth part of it and move the other, the other part to the side. you got to sift through the things that are being channeled to us sometimes by other people. But there could be even someone you dislike, someone who you hate, someone who's, you know, who, who's, who's, uh, who's been your, you know, your rival or an antagonist of yours for years. It doesn't make a difference. There might be some truth to it. And we can learn a lot from everyone, only if we listen. And we have to be an active listener constantly. So the second way to maximizing pleasure is to always be listening. With that, my friends, thank you so much for joining. Ravanda, I hope I answered your question. Oh, if one who loves you gives a criticism, first recall that there is love being expressed. That is true, because someone who doesn't care about you, thank you, Lawrence, if someone doesn't care about you, they won't bother to criticize you, right? But when someone cares... <laughs> When someone cares about you, that's when they criticize. It's because they love you. Okay? That is a very, very good point. Thank you so much. And we will be back sometime soon with way number three. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, sometimes